Hey, Dr. Dan here. Uh, we are going to make a Firebase Ionic app. <clears throat> um, and uh, I have a list of resources here, um, but essentially there's a couple steps that I'll, uh, I'll go over in another video. Um, and it's all just set up steps. You want to set up a GitHub repo, get Node.js, get React, Iangular, Ionic, um, and then set up Ionic React project with capacitor, um, add React. Firebase, database, and uh, finally, well, to set up the app UI, hook up app UI to real time database. <clears throat> okay, um, so this is basically the steps we'll be going through. Um, I'll put all this in the uh, in links below the video, but um, just real quick, you know I think um, it's a it's a great time to be not a great time in general right now um, with the, the coronavirus, um, but it's a great time because you're you're home, you have more time than you usually do if you're like me. Uh, it's a great time to kind of develop and hone some skills that um, that can really pay off especially in a world where uh, working, being able to work from home and being able to do web development is gonna become increasingly more valuable. Um, so the first three links, I just have some resources to uh, get to understand Git, which is all good for remote learning. Um, first four links, sorry. Uh, because Git allows you to coordinate with, uh, with big teams. And then I have a few links about Node. Um, Basically, the plan for the app before we get started is we're going to build an app on top of Node.js, which is a framework built in JavaScript. Um, in that framework, there is another framework made with Node.js, uh, developed by the people at Facebook called React. A uh, very popular web framework allows us to do some pretty complicated single page application stuff. And then there's another framework called Angular. Out of the Angular framework, um, Ionic was initially built and now it's neutral between uh, React and Angular. Ionic is going to allow us to do cross-platform uh, development, so this is the spiritual successor to Cordova and PhoneGap, but basically you can use JavaScript, HTML, um, that kind of stuff to deploy to uh, Android or iOS phones with one code base, um, as well as deploy to the web in a progressive web app, WA or uh, deploy to desktop. Um, the things that allow us to deploy to all of those with the same code base is uh, Capacitor. And um, I have some links to that as well. Uh, in order to understand what we're doing, we're gonna make a React, an Ionic React app. So it's going to have the Ionic framework, which is a lot like the Angular framework, but it'll have React, uh, you know, virtual DOM, um, and functional programming. And this app will uh, be hooked into a real-time database. You'll get a feel for the Ionic UI uh, and some you know, interesting and efficient things you can do with that. And um, finally, you'll get a feel for how to use a real-time database, a free real-time database. Um, with uh, We'll be using Google's Firebase and Cloud Firestore. Okay. So um, all of those things are kind of built out of Node, and we're going to be using GitHub Desktop to um, to coordinate uh, to sa to save our code. Um, W3Schools, you can learn about Node.js. You can also learn about React, and you can learn about uh, Angular. And I have all those links here too. Um, W3Schools is a great resource. You can just go through their tutorials and um, they have the answers, they have a you know, real-time code editor that'll show your changes. Um, the same thing is true of some things I've linked to in, of um, free code camp, 
org number 17 in the links. Uh, this is a great resource, again, a lot like W3Schools, but you can kind of see your progress. You can, um, in both of these, you can get, you know, officially or unofficially certified and um, get really good at uh, web development. Um, there are two tutorials. There's an Angular IO tutorial and a um, React uh, tutorial. Oops, I had the same link twice. Um, a React tutorial right here. Both of those are their uh, default tutorials. They're really good. One's called Tour of Heroes. That's the Angular one. The other is called, um, it's just a tic-tac-toe game you make out of React. And uh, they really, you'll really understand how these, the fundamental concepts of these two frameworks. Um, so we're gonna build out of those two fundamental frameworks a cross-platform app. And so Ionic kind of uses both of those frameworks, React and Angular. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I have a lot of other links here too. We might put this app up on AWS just to show you how to put this on your own server. And I've linked um, to some EC2 user guide. Uh, they have some great tutorials in here as well. Um, and there's a lot of other resources here too. Uh, <clears throat> So I'm just drawing your attention to this and the setup at the beginning. Sorry for taking so much time before I start uh, developing, but uh, I think it's a great time to um, to really you know improve your abilities and uh, and learn on your own. And I, I hope you uh, you take this this project that I'm going to give to you um, and and run with it. You know, and and this is just a framework that we're developing today, so you can see how plugins work, how React. Um, works with Ionic and how a real-time database works, but um, I hope you take this these ideas and you know develop your own um, really interesting app. All right, so um, I'm just going to assume that we have a GitHub repo and Node.js and React and Angular and Ionic. Like I said, I'll put out another video um, explaining how to get set up with all these things. All right, so I'm going to start right here at number six in this video. And because I have installed um, Node.js, I can type node into my windows and open a node command prompt like this. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure I have all the requisite uh, tools. So, um, if you don't, npm install Ionic is a good idea to run. Um, I know I have that already. Uh, what I'm gonna do is actually cd to my documents. I'm gonna cd to a repo that I've already made um, called, it's inside of git, uh, called, I think Ionic 5. Act up. Um, okay, and now that I'm in here, uh, I didn't need to be in here to type this, but I'm going to npm install. Actually, let me make this a little bigger uh, font here. Oops, maybe I can't. Properties. How's that? Okay, uh, so I did not mean to make this so big. Let's scale that down a bit. <clears throat> All right, um, so we'll just do an npm install dash g native run and Cordova res. Now I'm going to do Ionic start to start my Ionic app, and I'm going to call this app. Um, should we call this uh, real time database? I'm going to make this a tabs format app. Uh, so that means just, I'm going to use the tabs template. It's going to give me three pages with some nice um, tabs. You'll see in a second dash dash type equals react 
because it's going to be a React Ionic app. And uh, Capacitor I also want installed. Capacitor, again, is going to allow us to access native APIs and to do things like add an Android build, add an iOS build from the same code base. Okay, I fast forwarded that a bit for you so you don't have to watch all the install. I'm gonna now uh, CD to my, um, <clears throat> what do I call that? Real time database. I'm gonna CD into that and now I'm gonna start installing um, local, locally uh, some, some um, NPM packages, some node modules that we're going to, to want. Um, actually, before I do that, let's let's open it up so we can actually just take a look at what we've got. We'll take a quick tour. Um, I'm using Visual Code. I'll have a link to that too. Um, I hope that is big enough for you. All right, uh, so what we have here is some node modules. Um, these are all the things that we can import. There's some very useful ones in Ionic and React that we will be using. Um, you can think of those as little chunks of reusable code and that we get just by typing Ionic start and some uh, Ionic and some NPM installs will add to these node modules. Um, in public, we have the, uh, the things like the icons and the shapes that we'll want displayed. Um, eventually, as, uh, as app resources. Source is where we'll spend most of our time. Um, in source uh, components, we won't really touch very much, but these would be reusable components that you want to import on in various pages, uh, for example, and these are our pages. Each page has an associated CSS file and TSX file. TSX is TypeScript React, so you see things like uh, like this and the imports are TypeScript and then the react.fc and the anonymous function returning a big chunk of HTML-like code is the React part. Okay, now that was really fast. In theme, we have our global variables. Uh, we can change those up. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. App.tsx is our bootstrapping, um, bootstrapping file. This is where we import all the things that we'll need throughout the rest of the file. And this is where we define our constant app. And index.tsx is where we render um, all our single page elements. So is it, it's going to be following the progressive web app kind of single page application format. We'll have a lot of different code and different parts of the app, but they're all gonna get injected into this first page as the user clicks on various things. And this turns out to be a really efficient and safe way to uh, do web development. So the only thing we're doing in here uh, is we're calling that bootstrapping file uh, and rendering React and we're rendering that to the a virtual DOM instead of the actual DOM for efficiency. That's a React, uh, you know, a, a React uh, convention that we'll, we'll be following. All right, that's our brief tour. So that's what it looks like so far. Um, we need to install some extra stuff though. So first thing I'm gonna do is npm install Firebase dash dash save. Uh, we need Firebase for our real-time database. I fast forward it again, just skip the install. Um, next, we want to npm uh, install, and we'll put these at ionic slash react uh, hooks, and at uh, ionic we're going to install PWA elements, uh, progressive web app elements, uh, again, are going to let, let us 
do things that let us tap into um, different APIs for uh, the single page application code base that will then make into different mobile mobile apps. Okay, or a progressive web app, or everything we want, um, depending on what we're interested in. All right, one last thing. We're going to npm install. Um, and we want uh, react npm install dash dash save react dash firebase dash hooks. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about hooks in just a second, but uh, in React, hooks are basically functions that can use the state of the function, um, and so they can save information about themselves, but you can pass them around as functions. And they can also do things like uh, save the effect, like get triggered on certain effects as the user does things like click on buttons. Uh, so we're going to use Rea uh, React hook to hook into our Firebase database. I think that's all we need for now. Um, so let's just type Ionic sir here. And let me bring down a window so we can see this in action. What's going to happen is because we're using Node, it's firing up a development browser. And uh, what we're looking at is actually what our app looks like so far. If I hit Control Shift I, we can see uh, if I click on, there's a, uh, I'm in Chrome, so now I'm in Chrome Tools, and we can actually see what this looks like on a phone. I'll show you how to build it to, uh, I guess I'll use an Android device. Um, so I can actually build it to like a tablet and we'll check that out as well. But this is all it is. It's uh, three tabs, kind of boring icons down here. And um, I, I think for tab two and three, I'll eventually release part two and three of this video where I'll do um, some things with geolocation and the camera. Uh, but for now, I just want to get you started with basic database functionality, which is being able to add to a database in new information, being able to retrieve that information, sort it, right, um, in, in a way that is, is that you want, being able to display that information and the ability to, to add new information. And then finally, of course, being able to update and remove that, um, that information in the database. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. I'm gonna just bring this over and then hit Control Shift I again to get rid of that. So we just have a web page we're looking at. Um, and at this point, I can bring up the code itself. Okay. The cool thing is, as we change the code here, um, we will see our database update, uh, update live. Um, for example, if I go into source and uh, I go into pages, we're on page one. So let's take a look at page one. Uh, you can see we have a, a name and a title here. So let's call this, um, we're gonna make a to-do list app. It's classic database stuff, right? First app, it's kind of like writing hello world, but for databases, you make a to-do list. Um, so, and the explorer container down here, uh, we actually don't need it, so I'm just, I'm gonna delete it. And as you see, this is all updating um, dynamically. Now, a to-do list is a list, so if we take a look at that icon down here, say we wanted to change that, uh, believe that that, and we actually get rid of this import now, we're not using an explorer container. I believe that icon is actually defined in the app.tsx file, and yes it is. So this is where the triangle is defined. And if you take a look up here, uh, there's triangle being imported there. So instead of triangle, let's import list. 
and then down here, let's make the icon for the uh, ion tab button list. Okay. Um, all right, so that's it for, uh, let's get down to the functionality. Um, first thing I want to do now is um, I want to start, actually I want to set up our database first. So um, Firebase is where we want to go. Let me just make this a little bigger. And you will need a Firebase account. Google's just misbehaving. Uh, all right, so um, when you get to Firebase, you're gonna have to sign up with your email. Once you've done that, you'll get to, it's all free. You'll get to a, um, a console eventually. This is called the Firebase console. And you'll wanna add a project. We'll enter a project name real-time database, oh, can't do that, real-time database, does that work? Sure does, and we'll start spinning that up, and I'm gonna just use my default account. It's gonna take just a second to spin up. Okay, so I spared you the uh, setup and fast-forwarded again. I'm going to stop saying that. You can assume when the video suddenly jumps that I fast forward it through some nonsense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so new project's ready. Here's our real-time database project. Uh, we want to click on web. We're going to give it a name, React Database. Is ionic. And we're just going to register it. All right, the only part of this we're interested in is this uh, config. So I'm just gonna grab, uh, we, can actually, we can grab the variable too. So the variable down to the end of um, the bracket. And then let's continue to console. Um, we're gonna have to enable our database. So I'm gonna click on database, create a database in Cloud Firestore. I'm going to start in test mode. Um, I'm not going to go over signing in and handling that, except I will show you how to um, how to add a user, just in case you want to go to that. And eventually, if you want to start producing an app and making some money off of it, you, you would want to lock it down with authentication. For now, we're just going to allow anyone to read and write um, as long as they're within this timestamp. So we've started in test mode, default location is fine. <laughs> you know what happened. All right, and then, um, so here is our, uh, here is our database. And um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, that is all the information we need. And I will um, go back to that when when we're ready for it. Um, to connect to our database now, uh, in there's lots of ways of doing this. The safest would be to have a separate file and um, export and keep that file out of uh, Git, but I'm not gonna go over that step right now. I just wanna show you how to get the database up and running. So right under theme variables, I'm going to say uh, Firebase imports just a comment, right? And um, let's paste in that config that we copied. And then uh, before we do that, we're gonna import uh, Firebase from Firebase slash app. Now that we have that, and actually just so I don't forget, put in a separate file and exclude from git with dot git 
ignore. Uh, that's just a reminder to myself that I don't want to be checking my API key into Git because that's public, and then people can use my um, my database and do stuff to it that I don't want them to do. Okay. Um, but for now, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not checking this into Git yet. So now that I've imported Firebase, I can call Firebase dot uh, initialize app and just pass in that Firebase config variable. Okay. Um, and now we should have a, at least an initial connection to Firebase. Um, Okay, so we need to make some files now. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to combine some um, TSX files and some just normal JavaScript code uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's just kind of easier to do for me um, to interact with Firebase through, through JavaScript React um, instead of uh, TSX. And two, um, I wanna show you how you can just write JavaScript files in um, in this Ionic framework, and it's just normal JavaScript. You call it um, the same way you would normally call JavaScript from TypeScript files and from TSX files. So uh, let's get started with that. So um, in pages, actually just in source, um, I'm going to right click and make a new file, and I'll call this file so uh, a little philosophy for React um, development, you know, concepts. Um, for me, it's easier to think in terms of like the smallest possible component and then build up from that. So if we're making a to-do list, the smallest possible component, for example, is the item, the to-do item, right? And then uh, an, a list of items is built out of many of those items. And um, then um, a, so we need an item class, an item list class, and then an, an add item class, I guess, uh, so that we can, the add item class is gonna handle the adding of an item to the item list, right? And the sending of the item list to the database and, um, and updating, okay? So let's start with item. So we made a new file, we're going to call it item.js, so it's just a normal JavaScript file, and um, we're going to import some stuff. So we're going to import react and uh, comma, the things from react we're interested in because it's going to be a react hook is, oops, not use react, use state, we're also going to use effect. And this is going to be imported from React. Okay, next we're going to, and think of this as just, we're telling this file that it needs to have access to these chunks of code that allow us to do useful stuff. All right, on the UI side, we're gonna import ion item. That's what we're gonna build. This is kind of like HTML, but uh, it has meaning to Ionic, but we'll write it like HTML tags. Ion item, uh, we'll also need an ion label and ion uh, text and an ion item sliding. Um, the way that I'll do this database is the, uh, the options for editing and deleting, you know, naturally people kind of want to swipe left. So there'll be a swipe left functionality and you can either remove that to-do list item or you can update it. Uh, once you swipe left, and then uh, you can save those changes. But normally we'll just display the list until they until they swipe, or click if it's a web app or Android or uh, <clears throat> electron app. So we'll need a, a ion item sliding. This is a nice UI type of functionality to understand as well. Um, ion item option and ion item options and ion icon all that comes from uh, at ionic slash react we're then going to import 
uh, document trash just as icons from um, ion icons slash icons. We'll import, uh, that's it actually. So this part actually doesn't need to know about Firebase. Um, because this is just how we're going to display data uh, that we that we give to it, right? Um, smallest possible component. So we're going to export default function. Uh, and we're going to call this function item. And item, um, actually, before I do that, item is going to, um, when we export the item function, we're going to also export um, a do edit, a do delete, and a doc uh, method, which we have yet to write. Okay. Uh, we're going to let data equals doc.data. We'll just define that function there. And here's our return statement. So most of the magic in React always happens within the return statement. And we're going to have an ion item sliding. Uh, we'll have an ion item. And we'll have an ion label, uh, which will be class equals and text wrap. So just some styling here in case they put a really long to-do to item. Uh, we want that text to be able to wrap around. All right. And then finally, here's where the actual text comes in. Ion text last name equals item title. And then inside here, let's have a div, which is just going to be our date. Dot, nope, our data. Dot name. Uh, whoops. And notice that I put the, that in brackets. Um, this is to indicate that uh, we are receiving this value from uh, from elsewhere, right? This value's uh, it, this is our binding, which is going to allow our code to inform that value inside that div. All right, uh, so that's the ion, the first ion text. The second ion text is going to, um, let's do class name equals item sub title. That's, you know, in case we want to style it later or override something. Um, we'll have another div, but in here, we'll have a new date object. And this will be data.createdOn plus, so that it's, we ensure that it's a string. So we'll have the date that it was created on. Um, and then that'll be the end of that ion text. Finally, we need somewhere to actually put the, um, the information. So class name equals uh, item ID. And uh, again, we can style this later. If I, can, if I have time, I don't want this video to run too long. But uh, we'll just have the doc.id there. And um, we'll have the end of the ion label. Let's just put a div in here uh, so that we can add content to there later. And um, that needs to be capitalized. Don't know why that didn't catch it. Okay. Um, all right, so now we have the actual uh, sliding scale. So it's the end of our ion item, and then below that we will say uh, ion item options, 
we're going to have two ion item option tags. So there's one. Let's copy that. There's our second one. So option inside of options, right? Makes sense? Okay. Um, first, we'll have a icon. So people, um, well, actually, we need to define the function. So ion item uh, option, um, we're going to put it on click here, but what it really is looking for is this click slide uh, functionality. So we're going to say uh, equals and to indicate that we want some code to run. We use those brackets and we're going to use um, arrow function expression to call our do edit function on that particular ID that we have slid on or click and dragged on. Okay. Um, once we're done with that do edit, we can have a ion uh, icon so that people know what they're doing. The slot is going to be icon only and the icon is going to be, and this is our edit, so um, we'll use the document icon and close it. Okay. Let's move that over one, that over one, and that can stay there. Let's move these over just so I can see what's going on here. All right, um, we're going to do something similar here. So in this one, we'll have an on click um, is going to be equal to, and we'll open our brackets again, arrow function, anonymous function, which will be do delete. And this will be doc.id that we perform the do delete function on. So this very thing's ID. Um, you know what, let's do a color equals danger so that they know that that's about to, uh, to do something that maybe they don't, maybe they don't want to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's the end of that. And now we just, this is going to drive me nuts. click equals uh, this is the reason to have this to delete and after that do delete we need a semicolon ducks are loud um, <laughs> some wildlife <laughs> we need a semicolon and let's pull this color danger and just put it right here so we don't get confused Do delete semicolon dot dot dot. Okay, now they're the same. Great. Um, something's not right here. This is unnecessary. There we go. And this is also unnecessary. So we need both of them. Don't know why I thought we didn't. Uh, yeah. On click equals. Oh, because we um, you know what? That that's probably fine. If it's an extra bracket, it shouldn't it shouldn't affect anything. Oh, except 
you know what? Because we need the extra bracket because we need dual binding on the first one. We don't actually need it on the second one. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Bring this over here. So uh, on click equals to delete. Sorry. the uh, semicolon there. Okay, so the difference is we want um, we want to be able to update the code here. Here we don't care. We just want to get rid of the um, the ID. All right, we need a uh, ion icon slot equals icon only. And our icon uh, will be trash. No surprise there. Hmm. Uh, icon equals trash. There we go. And let's save it. And uh, that'll be the end of our option. And item options. Whoops. Our first uh, option needs to be up here. Don't know how that happens. Uh, ion item option. That's where our on click should be. And then we should close that. right before we start the second one. So we have ion item options, ion item option, and then ion item option, icon, icon, ion option, and ion item options. Okay, last but not least, we need a semicolon. So we're returning, um, we're still in a big return statement, right? So we're gonna return all that stuff. All right, that one looks good. Um, and so now let's uh, make another page. So a new file, this is gonna be our item list.js. And, um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all these because I think we're gonna have a lot of similar imports. Just paste them here. Um, we're definitely gonna use state. I don't think we need effect here. Um, but we're gonna use state from React. Uh, we're going to also import item itself. So import item from dot slash item. The file that we just made. Um, here we're going to actually import Firebase because this is where we start having to inform the items of what they're going to, um, what information they're going to display. So import Firebase from Firebase. Notice that we're importing Firebase in this case and not from Firebase app like we were in the app file. Uh, okay, let's import use import open use collection is what we'll call this from uh, react dash firebase hooks slash fire whoops fire store all right and that's going to enable us to more easily speak with uh, firebase when we when we put together our real-time data um, the only thing I'm going to add to all this stuff is I'm going to add ion list. And because I know we're going to use a list. Um, okay. So we're going to, again, export default default function. And this function we call the same thing as our file item list. And the thing, the method that we're going to pass in is going to be uh, do edit. And here's our function. 
Um, first, we need a constant, and this constant's going to be our, uh, it's going to define our um, use collection. So use collection is just like use state and use effect. It's uh, a hook that we're tapping into. This particular hook takes uh, three variables there, and when we set that equal to use collection, We talk to Firebase. Firebase dot fire store. Fire store. Firebase dot fire store. That is a method. Dot collection. Now we give the collection a name. I'm going to call it items. Now we can decide whether or not we want to order it. So let's just order by its created on date. It's a natural thing to do with the to do list. And description in case they are happen to be the same date, comma. All right, and then we need a snapshot list and options, and we talk to a database, and we are going to include metadata changes. It's true um, because we want to listen for changes coming from not just ourselves, but other people using our app. Because um, this is a dynamic app, right? So it's, it's our to-do list, but we can also have other people just adding to it, as long as they're using the same app. So from this, you can make you know, a game, or you have multiple, you know, multiplayer game, you can make a message app, a chat app, uh, any kind of social media app, because other people are gonna have access to the same database, and you can see how to sort things. Um, and you could sort them by, by user to keep them however you want to organize them. Okay, um, we're going to have another constant function here. Um, we're going to call it close sliding items equals. So when you close the sliding items, we're going to use arrow var list first document dot uh, get element by ID. I wonder why it didn't auto fill that. That's weird. Okay. We'll look for a, a node called list in our DOM. And then we'll say list dot close sliding items. Boom. Okay. Uh, we'll have a constant called do delete. And here's where we actually define that delete. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll pass in the ID and we will, um, actually ID, I don't think it needs to be in this. Uh, do delete equals ID, which is going to say Firebase dot fire store, so same thing, right? Dot, we need to drill down to the collection we're interested in. It's called items. Now we call dot doc, we pass in the ID, dot delete is the only thing we need to do to, uh, to delete it. Pretty cool. All right, and now finally, here's our return. So our return is going to be another chunk of HTML, but this time we're going to make it a um, fragment. So to define a, a um, React fragment, we do the uh, greater than, less than arrows, and um, that's just going to tell our virtual DOM that we're going to assemble these into a bigger uh, entity further up the chain. We're actually gonna do that inside of tab one. More on that later. So let's start with just some normal uh, HTML. So we will have an H3, we'll call this item uh, to do. And then uh, probably don't need a space there. After the H3, let's put our list, ion list. We need to give it the ID list because we're gonna be looking for it as we saw above. And then inside of the list, we'll just put our value. We'll make sure our value's there. 
Uh, and if we get a, if we have something in value, it doesn't return uh, null or false. We say value dot docs dot uh, map. All right. And what we're going to map using doc as our map iterator is going to be we're going to map is going to be um, another return statement. So we're going to return uh, if we're not loading um, and we have a value for item return not loading and item uh, actually let's just bring this down a bit now we actually are calling the item class that we defined we just defined it right so item we know um, is going to render these sliding items and the sliding items are going to take some values we need to pass in a do edit equals uh, for do edit, let's use i for our iterator that we're going through, and um, open this up, and we want to close sliding items, and do the edit on i. Uh, do delete, same thing, right? We'll use i as our iterator, go through, up, we will close sliding items, but instead of doing edit, we'll do delete again on i. Okay. Um, right below that, actually, we're going to have to give everything a key, so that's going to be doc.id. That's just a React. Um, convention there that we need to follow and this is actually the end of our item so our item begins here and ends here and we're returning this item if we're not loading right all right uh, down here we need to have a semicolon and then uh, after here we have the ion list and we have a semicolon and that's it. So one last JavaScript class in the file um, and this is going to be our add item.js class. And what I'll do is um, I'll grab these because some of them are going to be used over here. Um, we're going to use state and use effect here. Use state, use effect. We still need our Firebase hooks. Um, we actually need a couple more things now. We're going to need an ion button, an ion input to put things into. Uh, and actually, that's it. So a lot of these we won't actually use, but I don't feel like taking them out. And we don't need any icons. Um, we need to, uh, let's see, I don't think we need use collection here. Yeah, we don't need use collection. Um, we do need to uh, use document though. So import use document. And this is another Firebase hook. So React dash fire, Firebase dash hooks slash Firestore. Okay. We're just going to have a normal old function here. We'll call it add item. And whenever you add an item, you'll have an initial initial value. Um, inside of this function we'll have we'll define our 
our hook now. So we're writing custom hook once again, just meaning that we're writing a hook that uses other hooks. So uh, we have constant item and set item. Whenever you write a hook, you have the thing that you're going to set and uh, the method by which you will set that thing. So you think of this as like the state that's internal to the function and the way that you're gonna change or update that state. So we're gonna call this use state. Uh, we'll pass in an empty string for now. We'll also have a constant. And here we need our value loading error. Trifecta, uh, which will be use document. Use document, and now we need to do our Firebase um, talking to Firebase drill here. So Firebase dot Firestore dot doc. Let's drill down to our items, and here's how we're going to add to the items. We're just going to add our initial value right in there, comma. Now we need our uh, snapshot listen options and we're just going to include metadata changes true okay we need uh, to be using an effect here because we need to know when the user is trying to add things in and inside of here we'll ask if it's loading if it's uh, not loading and it has an initial value that exists, um, then what we'll do is we'll set item, so that hook that we defined up above, with value.data.name. So we have our loading, our initial value, and our value. Um, and we can just pull this in like so. All right. So that's going to be our uh, the beginning of our use effect. Now let's have a constant called on save. And this has to run asynchronously. So it's going to be an async, and we're going to talk to Firebase again. So let's get a reference to our database. Let collection ref equal firebase.firestore.collection and the name of our collection items. Um, if our initial value has a value what we'll do is we'll await uh, we'll wait for that reference to get back collection ref dot doc remember we're using document here with initial value gotta watch that I'm gonna mess up the code if I don't I keep forgetting that I uh, initial value dot set and we're going to pass in the name, which is just the item the created on, which is a new date. Uh, oh man, I'm running long. Sorry, I didn't mean this video to go on so long. Uh, new date. There, you know what? Let's, let's bring this down. So we set created on new date. Uh, let's get down to the time. The word those ducks are loud. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Try to be professional, you know. All right. Uh, get time. So 
what they get for living in Idaho. <laughs> and uh, when we when we get back from that, let's set item to blank string again. And let's call clear. Okay. And that's going to be it for that. Now let's write our return. So return. And this return is going to be another fragment. So we define our fragments like this. And we'll have an ion item. Um, in that item, we'll put ion input. How did you know? Code correction. Inside ion input, we'll say our value equals item. We need an on input. And when we have an on input, we'll need to grab that input. And the way we're going to do that is E, just the iterator we're going to use for input, is going to be set item E dot target dot value. So that's getting into the drilling into the input as the user types it. Um, and actually, we can make ion input self closing. We don't have to have a self in there. Uh, so I just added the backslash at the end to avoid having um, a opening and closing tag for ion input. It's not necessary. We'll have an ion button. Here's our save button. Let's. Uh, so you get a feel for it. Here's some cool stuff you can do with React. We can change the style right here as if we're writing, uh, you know, basically like JavaScript code or you know CSS classes. But what I'm actually going to do if I open double brackets here and I say margin top uh, eight, I can set the style of that particular element, set the margin on its top um, right here in the render function. So no need to use uh, CSS for little things you want to change. You just write in the style uh, right where you, where you want it. Inline style within um, React rendering is definitely a thing. All right, on click. Uh, we need to define the on click for the save button. Um, we're going to set that equal to our on save method. on save um, I'm going to copy this and paste it because we're going to have two buttons uh, and this one on click instead of having a function we are going to pass in a function which is going to be set item to nothing This one is going to be called clear, and this one is going to be called save. Okay, so the user can clear their text, or they can um, save to the database, depending on what they want to do. And at the very bottom, because um, we didn't do it at the top, we need to export the default. Right. So we, we could have done this up here um, as we did in these export default function. Doesn't really matter. Uh, all right. So everything's still good uh, in our in our app over here. Um, now we need to finally um, start it, uh, basically just use this ion list and render it into our tab1.tsx page. Uh, so we have our, our title, and then we have uh, right before the end of content. Let's start putting things in. 
So let's leave some space here for uh, changing things. And let's have an ion card. It's going to start throwing errors. It says, hey, you don't have an ion card. Yes, that is true. Ion card. I'll just add them as I go. Uh, we'll have an ion card. And then um, in that card, uh, we could have, let's just put an H3, which is just list of things to do. You know, and since this is like a real-time database app, um, why don't we call this like a group synchronization exercise, right? So different members of the group can add things. So let's call this like group list of tasks. Like that group list of tasks. And you know what? We'll make it even kind of stylish, like as you see often in code, these to do. You can even do it like backslashes. To do. Yeah, you know, I don't really like that. Let's just take off the header. <laughs> it's bugging me. All right. So group list list of tasks is what we'll see. And uh, underneath that, but still inside the card, um, we can do a. Header and um, you know what? This H3 really ought to be inside there. Let's see the difference. A little nicer uh, with the spacing. And then uh, let's have um, ion card content. It's going to get mad at me because I need to add that. Card content um, inside of ion card content. All right, here's where things get fun. We're actually going to push in our add item that we defined earlier. So remember, smallest possible components. An add item is saying we need to define an initial value when we try and render that. So we'll say that that's going to be current. All right, this means that before we start returning things on tab one, we're going to have to define our hook to get access to it. So current, the thing that we're going to change and the method that we change it with, and we'll just say use state, and we'll set it initially to null. Okay, and it's still mad because we did not import uh, use state. Import React, comma, use state. There we go. All right. Um, so there is our add item current. And we're not done yet because we also need to pass in um, the clear, which is going to equal. Open up brackets, and this is going to be our set current to null. Okay, that should be good. Um, we actually don't need a closing tag here, we can make that self closing like that. So there's our add item. Uh, I am content. Now, before we get out of ion uh, card, let's put some space here to render stuff. And then let's put um, a item list. This is our item list, right? So we want to import our item list. We're going to render it right there as a fragment. Um, and we need to always pass in our do edit when we 
when we call item list like this. You always have to keep in mind with React, like it looks like you're writing HTML, you're actually putting functions in, you know. Uh, so set current. That always throws me off anyway. And we can make this self closing as well. So that is it. Um, at the bottom, we export this as tab one. Uh, and it looks like everything is rendering fine. You can see that we already have a uh, the ability to to do things. So um, let's try it out. Testing one two three. Let's clear it. That works. Testing one two three four five six. Let's save it. All right. That's not ideal. <laughs> so. Um, let's see what happened here. Let's take a look at our database. And we have our data. If we switch over to authentication, we shouldn't have to do anything there. So I think I have a problem with my um, the way that I'm connected. So what I'm going to do here is take a look at um, at the uh, rendering when I try and save. So I type something in and I save. Uh, we don't get anything back. All right, that's a bit more of a problem. I'm going to save you the trouble of sitting with me awkwardly while I figure out what's going wrong. And I'll pause the video and come back with the solution. Okay, it actually didn't take me long. Um, so the first thing I noticed, this is by the way the worst type of error to get when you're working with a database because I have uh, from, from this, unless I do some console logs, no idea why it's not talking to the database because it's not throwing an error. This is why you should always like it when you see like red errors because like then you know where to start. Otherwise, you're stuck going through each line of code very carefully. Um, so, in my add item.js, I left one little word out, two words actually. Uh, so, after we pass in the created on, so this is an add item.js, we're awaiting the, we're trying to set the value, we pass in the new date, I want to do comma and merge. Very important line of code there. <clears throat> Merge true, and um, before we uh, and we want to actually close the, the brackets right here. So this is another thing we're passing in to the um, await method. So let's save that. That was the first error. <laughs> uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, um, so looking line by line through my code, um, the second error it occurs as the same function, it's in the on save function. We have this async method and um, the first thing we're doing is uh, checking if there's an initial value, but we need an else statement here. Um, so if there isn't an initial value, we want to await collections ref collection ref dot add. Um, so we f we forgot to actually call the uh, the add function. <laughs> Typical me. Um, I did the edit, the delete, everything but the add. So uh, if we don't actually have anything in the database yet to update, we want to add, and this is going to be um, just the information, the same information we use to update. So created on new date dot 
get time, and that's it. Um, and then we want to clear uh, the set function by just passing in an empty string and call clear. Okay. So it makes sense we weren't seeing anything in the database, so I did not actually add the add. Testing add. Thing. And there we go. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> So we have a real-time database. Uh, let's test out, let's look at the database itself. So if I go to um, Firebase, something weird going on with that. Uh, this one's called real-time database. You can see uh, that first piece of data got added into my list with a created on and a name. Um, and we can even look at the real-time database and drill down and see the same thing, right? So we have our items, and in our items, click on that. Um, we can actually see the value at some point. Uh, but I find it easier now. I'm switching to like Cloud Firestore function from um, Firebase recently just because the React hooks are easier to work with with Firestore, and it's their new you know, flagship way of interacting with the database. So uh, that's it. So we have a item so far. Let's add a few more. Testing again, blah, 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 blah. save, and maybe one more. Save, and let's take a look at our database. If we refresh, well, we've actually got all three items at this point. Um, so let's delete the middle one. So I'm going to pull this over. And you'll see I have the delete and the edit function. So let's edit it and try. Ooh, OK. So document.getElementById. I thought something was wrong with that. Um, and that is in our item. Is it item list? I think it was item list. What is the functionality? It is document dot get element by ID. What did I do wrong there? That's weird. Paste that. I remember it not recognizing that. Um, let's try that again. Let's update. Doesn't like it. Uh, okay. So that's one thing I will take a look at in just a second. Let's test the delete function. All right. So delete function is not working for the same reason. All right. Uh, at least we're able to log into the database at this point. I'll be right back and fix those two last things, and we'll call it a day. Okay, so kind of an interesting uh, last little problem. So um, I am in my ion list importing document, because remember I copied and pasted over from uh, item, where we did actually use the document icon. But because of that, um, we have two things that we're referencing with document. Instead of calling the normal JavaScript DOM here, document got out, it's actually trying to call an icon. Uh, so we can just get rid of that import. And while we're at it, I'm just gonna clean up. Well, let's, let's test it at this point, make sure everything works. So if I scroll over and I edit, there, all the info pops up there. And this is an edited one, let's save. Uh, so you notice it didn't actually add one. It uh, changed and then added uh, changed the time of the edit. So let's test the delete functionality. Delete, delete. Great. Okay, our app is complete. A little bit of cleanup. Um, I'm just going to remove all the unused imports because, as we saw, that can cause problems. 
Um, you'll notice we're not using use state here, so we can get rid of that. And add item, we're not using, uh, we're not actually importing item because we do that in ion list. And we're not using our list here. Also not using any of these. state or effect. Let's get rid of those. <clears throat> and that is a much cleaner, uh, cleaner app. Um, <clears throat> so, so now we have a real-time database. Um, multiple people can use this app. And the uh, last thing I want to show you, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with like the styling in uh, in our theme variables, while the ducks are honking, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to override these real quick to get a nice kind of theme. So if we just search for uh, Ionic theme variable generator, this is kind of neat. Um, whoops, that's not what I want. Themes, color generator. Okay, so what we can do is actually just pick our colors here. Um, let's make the primary color like a light green. Um, actually, that's a little too light. Oh, oh, a nice tealish color. Secondary is fine. Tertiary, let's modify and make that like purple. Um, we can make. Uh, that's it. So now if we just copy all these CSS variables, instead of going through them individually and picking, um, we can control A, control B, paste them over, and now our app is going to look a little more stylish, you know, a little personal. Um, and as you saw, you can apply inline stylings uh, right in the React, um, the React code, as we did with our button. So as you see here, we can just directly style each of the individual elements. That's how we got a nice margin for the, um, for the buttons. And it's also worth noting that in uh, CSS, we can define custom classes that only apply, oops, tab one CSS, that only apply to tab one. So those are three ways you can change the styling. Um, I will leave a, making this app look pretty to you. Uh, you saw how to change icons as well. Okay, so uh, last thing, let's close this. We're sure that it works. Um, we are going to actually develop this. Uh, let's put it on two different platforms. So um, we're going to get back to our uh, our node terminal here and actually why don't I do this I'm gonna close my node terminal down and I'll do this right here in visual code so you can see what I'm doing so uh, if we just go to terminal and do new terminal right down here we get our uh, Mine is actually Git. You can set your terminal default here. Um, so mine is a Git bash terminal. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm going to do now is type in ionic build. And this is the same as typing into a Node.js terminal. And I'm just going to look and see if we get any errors when we make a production build. While that's happening, you see me in the bottom left here. I'm also going to uh, hook up um, hook up a, a Galaxy tablet so we can actually build to a physical device. 
um, you're going to want to install uh, you're going to want to go to your settings if you have a tablet or a phone and enable debugging. Um, I'll put some links to that too if I haven't already in this tutorial. Uh, the other thing you want to do is plug it in physically to your computer. And if you want to deploy to um, if you want to deploy to iOS, you're going to need a Mac and you're going to need Xcode. If you want to deploy to Android mobile app or a tablet like this, you're going to need um, Visual Studio and, sorry, not Visual Studio, uh, Android Studio, and just get all the SDKs um, required, including platform tools. Uh, and there is some documentation about how to do that on Ionic as well. If you have those things, then it's pretty easy to deploy to. Uh, mobile we're just going to type ionic capacitor right which is how we're going to do cross-platform development add ios i'm on a pc so i won't actually be able to build to ios uh, but we can at least install the dependencies and have that ready to go and i will spare you the time that that takes okay and then um, and it's telling you, you can now run this to launch Xcode. You have to have Xcode installed, and it'll probably be on Mac or VM or something. Um, Ionic cap add Android for the other classification of mobile and um, personal devices. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. Um, now we can type in uh, npx cap open android. We can actually just launch Android Studio right from here, uh, which it's going to try to do. Let's see, Android Studio is firing up. There it is. Um, and it'll take Android Studio a little while to register this project as an Android project. Still uh, thinking, syncing with Gradle. I'll spare you this time it takes two as well. Okay, uh, so here's Android Studio and you can see it actually built us all the JavaScript files that we'll need. Um, here's our main activity. And if we have to modify permissions for using things like the plug, uh, plug-in for phone or anything like that, we do it there. Um, all right, and uh, here are the um, the bridge files from Cordova, where capacitors built on top of that. Um, all right, so you can see now this is the um, Samsung that I'm running on, and uh, you might want to check that you have uh, the relevant SDKs, so um, you'll want at least Pi uh, and maybe a few going down, and you want to make sure you have Android SDK build tools, command line tools, uh, you don't really need emulator, but it's nice to have Android SDK platform tools. Uh, all the Google Play tools and Intel X8 emulator, uh, all those are good to have. All right, so then you just run it, and over here on my tablet, you can kind of see in the corner of the screen, it's going to uh, try to build the APK and deploy it right to the tablet. Um, the APK is the thing that you would actually push to Google Play. Uh, and you have to go through a, a signing certificate process. It's a bit of a process, uh, so it's nice to test it out on a physical device before you try and push an app to the Play Store. Um, that also requires like writing descriptions and doing you know ratings and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it, it's possible, but it takes a little while. Um, all right. 
pause the video, this may take a second. Okay, and we're getting a screen. I'm sure you can't see this at all, um, but uh, we can actually see the app, uh, the to-do list app, and we can put things in, save them, and they show up. Um, after they're saved, we can swipe left and right to edit or delete them. And uh, the cool thing is that as we add things here, um, we can actually see them. So I've added two things into the to-do list. Um, and if we refresh our database over here, you can see those those two new items that we added. Okay, um, and if we really wanted to test multiple users, um, we could go back to our uh, terminal here. And so we've opened that Android, um, we could make a new terminal. And we could just run Ionic serve right here. So what we should see, if all is working, are these two entries uh, when we get our when we get our browser, and there they are. Um, so now we have multiple users; they both have access to the same data. If I delete uh, one over there, um, we we don't yet have a uh, have a update function. Um, however, it's uh, relatively easy to write once we have the database. Um, so right now it's a personal app, but um, you can quite easily see how you can modify this to uh, listen for, uh, for live updates from other users. So um, that is just the basics of Ionic, some basics of UI. Um, and then uh, setting up Firebase, getting Firebase to work, a few custom things you can do. And um, what I'll do is I'll link to all the learn more uh, um, resources, all 31 of them, learn more resources I've got. Um, it's, it's really worth checking out the Ionic documentation and um, I think uh, this capacitor ionic framework for using things like geolocation, I'll do another video about that and, uh, and talk a little bit more about all these resources that I've gotten. But um, we have accomplished all 10 of our goals, uh, well, assuming we started on six. And um, I hope that helps you kind of spend this time where we're all kind of inside, uh, I socially distancing, and uh, spend this time, you know, developing some creative idea for an app uh, where you need to store data somewhere and use that data and have other people have access to that data um, that isn't just local. So that is all totally current stuff. Uh, how to use JavaScript, React, um, and TypeScript, React and Angu um, Ionic uh, to, to set up a, a very basic app, but nevertheless an app that could serve as a foundation for whatever your dream is uh, in that area. So happy coding. I hope that motivates you and helps you.